Driving through the streets Walking on the beat Flying through the air Or anywhere We're the men and women in blue And you know we're here to help you True blue The policeman True blue Police woman Keeping danger out of your way Each and every day True blue The policeman True blue Police woman We're true blue I have a report to write for school, and I don't know where to begin. What's it on? It's on policemen, the job they do, and how they do it. You mean the job policemen and police women do, and how they do it? You've got to stop watching those afternoon talk shows. You're beginning to sound weird. Hey, look what I found. Wow, maybe I can use this in my report. This is the type of flashlight the police use. I wonder if it still works. Hey, cut that out. That hurts. That's much better. Now, I would greatly appreciate it if you would remove the cap and let me out. Gently, please. Who are you? I'm Hard Hat Harry, the magical genie with the hard hat. Who are you? I'm Robbie, and this is my sister Amber. Where did you come from? Well, it's a long story, but from right inside that flashlight. Ow! And I can tell you it was starting to get pretty uncomfortable. Well, now that you've done me a favor, what can I do for you? Well, my brother needs help in his report. Really, Robbie? What kind of a report is it? It's on policemen and the job they do. Oh, that's terrific. I have great respect for our law enforcement personnel. This is going to be fun. Oh, but first, I think we need to change clothes first. Ah, there, that's better. Now, are you guys ready to see how policemen do their job? You mean how policemen and police women do their jobs? Put a cork in it, Amber. <laughs> oh, but I think first you guys have to wear these. Ah, now you guys are ready. Come over here. Dark of night, light of day. It's time to take Hard Hat Harry and his friends away. Actually, Robbie, Amber is correct. Today, across the nation, women are working side by side with men in all areas of police work. Let's get out of here! Wow, that was cool! Oh, I would say it was a little more close than cool. I promise to be more careful the next time and look before we leave. <laughs> hey, where are we? Well, as a wise man once said, let's start at the very beginning, which is a very good place to start. And that's why we're here, which is where the training of our future policemen and women begins. Uh, let's take a look. In training to join the police force, policemen have to get both their minds and their bodies in shape. Come on, oh, let's try to keep up with these guys. Police trainees have to learn how to handle the different people and situations they may be dealing with. Uh-oh, looks like they're in trouble. One, two, three. Once out of the classroom, the focus is on physical fitness. Why does she have to do that? Because as a policewoman, she needs to be able to run and climb walls when necessary. To do their job properly, they have to learn all about the laws they will have to enforce. Why did you stop the picture, Harry? That training information is great for my report. Exactly, Robbie. Which is why I wanted to show you another type of training that the men and women of our police force go through. Ah! Uh, maybe we should just disappear and watch from a safe distance. Do you know why police cars have flashing lights and loud sirens? Of course you do, but if you don't, I do. So I'll tell you. 
When police cars are responding to emergencies, they have to get there as quickly and as safely as possible. The flashing lights together with the siren tell other motorists to move out of the way and allow the police car to pass safely. Why are they driving like that? Because the police have to be skilled drivers in all types of weather conditions. And here is where they learn how to control their cars on dry streets and on wet streets. But why? So when necessary, they can do this. successfully completed their training, they're provided with the proper equipment to do their jobs. But you guys wouldn't be interested in that, would you? Yes, you would. would. Please, okay, please, Okay, okay, okay. Your wish is my command. Hey, Robbie. Hi, Hi Amber. Hi. My name is Officer Barton. I'm from the Boca Raton Police Department. Today, I'm going to explain to you guys what all this equipment here represents on me, okay? I'm going to start with the gun over here, which is the gun. It's a 9mm, and it's a 15-shot gun. You see guns, you never want to play with them. They're very, very dangerous, okay? It holds 15 bullets in it. And here, as you can see, I have a beeper. I'm on 24 hours call. Anytime the police department wants to reach me, they page me. These are my bullets here. These are my pouches. These are bullets we keep here in front of us all the time, so they're easy to pull out. And when you pull them out like this, they go inside the gun, okay? And in here is 15 bullets. At all times, we have them. Some officers have them in the front, some have them in the back. Some have them sideways. But here also is my side handle baton, okay? And this is called a PR-24, and we use this before we use the gun. This is a martial art type weapon, and the way we draw it, we draw it from the side, it's cross handle, and you extend it out and you swing it like that. And what happens is, it comes out, okay? I'm gonna show you how it's done faster in motion, okay? When you're confronted by danger, or you're gonna take a guy down, okay? You reach over, you push it up, and you swing it around, you see. And there's many other ways you can do it. And extend it out. This is hard plastic, and it locks in here. See that? That means it can't go any further. And whenever we want to push it back in, you press that, and you push it in. And you always wear it here in the front on your side, and it snaps in. If I run at somebody, it never comes out. And if someone comes up behind me, they can never pull it out. It's important that you have it in front. So what you do, you take it from a cross straw, okay? Here on my side here, I have my police radio. And I'm gonna take that out and show it to you guys. The police radio here has one channel, and that's for the police department. On the top here, you have the volume control, and it goes louder or either lower. The other thing is the channel. And depending on who you wanna to talk to in the police department, you have various channels. Here is the home button. The home button is basically for if I'm in trouble and I can't talk on the microphone, I just press that on top and they notice in police help to me. And last but not least, we have my handcuffs in the back here. Okay. I keep them by the gun, you lift them up, and you take them out. See how they're in there? The position, at all times, they're up in the our position. And when you grab them, you grab them like this. So when you arrest a guy, you hit the arm, and it goes around like that. You see that? You like to touch it? See that? And what happens is you have keys here. This is a key to open and close it. And what we do is after we use them, we clean them up and we fold them like this. I put them right back in my case here, right in the back here. And they drop right in and you close it down. As you can see, all this equipment is up. Nothing is behind me, technically, behind me. Because that's important. Because if someone comes up behind me, I can't protect what's behind me. But on my side here, it's important. And last but not least, again, we have the sunglasses. That's important for your eyes. You put your sunglasses on, and you're Mr. Officer Friendly, and you're riding down the street, and you're looking for trouble, and you're looking for crime, and also you're looking for good kids. Are you guys good kids? Yes. Or are you bad kids? 
good. Good kids, that's what I like. I love good kids. Keep those grades, keep that behavior up, because we love you. And if you see us out there, you always say hello to a policeman. That's important, okay? Okay. 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 The vehicles police drive are just as important as the equipment they wear. They're designed with a very special purpose in mind. Speed, safety, and service. Hi, my name is Officer Wayne Barton with the Boca Chon Police Department. I want to show you what this car consists of, all the equipment we have in to make our job function work every day. Come on in, I'd like to show you the car. Here's our police radio. Um, we have a microphone here. This is how you talk in the police radio. Here, you key the microphone here, and you talk and talk to dispatch. And the volume control is here, and all three channels are here. You can change the various channels here. And most of the time, you talk on the police radio. You want to keep it on channel one. And um, also, we have the availability of scanning. You scan. On call back to you, you can back scan to between various channels in the police department. As you can hear, that's that's our main channel that we have there. And you turn it off here also. This is our TV monitor here. When we do DUI traffic stops and any traffic stops, now we have the availability of recording each moment. Uh, this has saved a lot of officers' lives in the past when officer is in help and he's the only one out. And uh, this records each moment of the officer and the individual that he's stopping. So this is very unique and state-of-the-art equipment that we're using now. And we had a camera. This is a camera that records everything across in front of the dashboard. And a video records everything the officer is doing or the suspect that they're stopping. So this is very, again, state-of-the-art equipment that we use in our police cars. This is the record button and the pause button. You press that every time you get out of the car and approach the car, and it records. And when you get back in the vehicle and you complete your car stop, you press that button again and it pauses each time you get in the vehicle. And on the bottom of that, you have the police sirens here. You have the lights, blue lights, takedown lights. You don't want to see those lights in your rear view mirror. On the very bottom, you have the siren, the police siren. You turn the right button on. Thank you, Officer Barton, for all your time and information. As efficient as these cars are, there's one thing they can't do, and that's maneuver in and out of traffic quickly. For that, they need this. Police all over the country use motorcycles. Hi, I'm Officer DeMott from Boca Raton Police Department. This is my bike. It has all the equipment just like on a police car. My emergency lights. It also has a siren. The police radio right on the top here so I can see it when I'm driving. Talk right into the microphone. I have a radar gun right here because that's what my job is to see how fast people are going and this is how I do that with this radar gun right here this is the horn for the siren it's got a nice little color on it there so it looks good back here is where I keep all my paperwork for all the reports that I have to do my traffic vest accident reports, all kinds of paperwork back here. Back here, this is where the other part of the radio goes with my antenna. These are the tail lights so people can see us when they're behind us. When I push this button here, that's how my motorcycle starts up. Push this button over here, it shuts it off again. Over here are all the controls for my lights and my siren. And this radar gun, I can even take it out of here. If I don't want to be on my motorcycle, I want to stand next to it. I can take it out like this. Neat, huh?
There's another vehicle police use that gives them high maneuverability in small areas. And you have one too. Is that a policeman on a bicycle? You bet, bicycles. Bicycles also give police the opportunity to meet and talk with the people they protect and serve. People like us. Hi, I'm Officer Scott Graber, Boca Raton Police Department. I'm currently assigned to the Bicycle Patrol for the Community Policing Division. This is the bicycle that I ride. Just to show you a few items on it. One, I got my horn, let people know when I'm passing them, coming around them. It's got two sounds, that's a low sound. In case I need it a little louder, I got this side. Okay, and also for when I ride at night, I use my white lights, which are required. Okay, these are quite bright, it's hard to tell right now, but during the day, but at night they're very bright. Okay, also, I have a blue light, which lets people know that I am a police officer. And you can, I don't know if you can see that, but it's a flashing strobe light. Okay, also on my bicycle in the front is this meter shows how fast I'm going and also how far I've traveled that day. On an average, I go anywhere from 15 to 30 miles on my bicycle during the day. This right here is the battery charger for my white lights. This gets plugged in every night, so my batteries are fresh every day for when I need to ride at night. Some other items that I keep on my bicycle, my water bottles. These, because it gets very hot, it gets anywhere in the 90s. That's why I have two water bottles. It gets very hot. Okay. Here's the bag that I keep a lot of my items in, such as citations, uh, little brochures for the public, such as I hand when I pull people over. In case people don't have kids in car seats, I give them this. It explains the laws. Very important. The other thing that I have on my bicycle is my little red light. That's also required if I ride at night or anybody rides at night. As a bicycle officer, I am a regular police officer just like everybody else. I have the same equipment, my handcuffs, my gun, my side handle baton, and my radio, my shoulder microphone stays up here because it's a lot easier to talk when I'm riding. Uh, the other uniform change is I, I'm able to wear shorts. These are special bicycle shorts with zippers instead of regular pockets. Makes it that much more comfortable. Just everybody remember, riding a bicycle is just the same as riding a car. If you ride in the street, you have to uh, watch all the traffic laws that apply. Same as a car, same for a bicycle. Okay, I want everybody to ride, be safe, and if you do ride, please wear a helmet. It will save your life someday. Bicycles allow the police to patrol larger areas of your neighborhood in a faster and more efficient manner. The radios they are wearing allow their dispatcher to tell them where they are needed and why. What's a dispatcher? Hmm, how can I explain this? A, a dispatcher is sort of like a telephone operator who responds to emergency situations. Maybe this will help. This is how it works. When you have an emergency and you dial 911, special operators like these answer your call and determine whether you need the fire department, the police department, or medical assistance. Next, using specialized phone equipment and sophisticated computers, the emergency operator then confirms where you are calling from. Once he knows where you are, and what your emergency is, he then checks local maps to see who can get to you the fastest and sends them on their way. That looks like a really neat job. And a very important one as well. You know kids, up to now I have shown you all the things people like to see about police work. But now it's time to show you something nobody likes to see. The slammer! The hooscow! The can! The big house, or a smaller version of the big house, known to friend and foe alike as the jail. Now be sure to check out this holding cell. There's one toilet, one bench, in a room roughly eight by eight where one person lives. Not a cool place to be. Robbie, do you think you have enough stuff for your report? You bet. This is great. What's next? 
Well, I thought I'd take you from this place where no one wants to be to a place everybody loves to be. You ready? Police helicopters have become an important part of big city law enforcement. Its advantages are clear. Helicopters are fast and they can patrol large areas easily. And their radios allow them to be in constant contact with police units on the ground. However, to do their job properly, police helicopters are equipped with some unique equipment. The next time you see a police helicopter, look for something hanging underneath the carriage. What you see here is an infrared heat sensing camera which allows the pilot to see people in the dark from the air. Because an infrared camera identifies heat. And people, whether they are standing, walking or running, have a body temperature of approximately 98.6 degrees or higher. The warmer the person, the easier it is for the camera to see them. But that's not all. Over to the left is a high-powered spotlight, remote controlled by the pilot. It's so powerful, it can turn night into day with the flip of a switch. That's a cool helicopter. Amber, can you tell me something else police officers use that gives them a height advantage over the people they're policing? Give me a hint. Well, it's one of your favorite animals. <laughs> Horses! Ding, 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 ding! You're right, Amber! Many police departments use horses in crowd control. Can you guess why? Because horses are bigger than people? You're right! Can you think of any reasons, Robbie? Because the policemen are sitting high off the ground so they can see more? That's correct. By sitting so high above the ground, they can better see what's going on in a crowd. But there's one more reason as well. People like horses. People treat officers in a more friendly way when they are riding horses. I know another animal that helps the police. Police dog. Oh, you're right, Robbie. <laughs> Hello, my name is Officer Steve Kawaguchi. I have a new partner. His name is Golf. We both work for the city of Oxnard's police department. Golf has been on the police department for approximately 18 months. I've been a police officer with the city of Oxnard for approximately eight years. Golf was born and raised in a country called Czechoslovakia. Golf is trained to find bad guys hiding in buildings, in orchards, and in other various places that anyone can hide. What golf does is, golf searches these people out by smelling them. Golf was trained to also search for narcotics and help us with looking for any type of narcotics that suspects may have. Golf and I will be working with the police department for a long time together. Golf is not only a police dog, he's also a family dog too. I take golf home with me and he lives with us at my house on the days he's not working. Go, car. Good boy. What a smart dog. Go, come here. Good boy. Good boy, go, go. Good boy, Knush. Sad knee. Good boy. Stein. Go, hup. Go, Kumni. Go, hup. Good boy. A port. Go, Kumni. Kumni. You probably have been noticing that when I talk to golf, I don't speak English to golf or give him commands in English. The reason being is that golf was born and raised in Czechoslovakian, so all his commands are given in Czechoslovakian. If I wanted golf to lie down, I would tell him lakni, and golf would lie down. If I wanted golf to sit, I would tell him golf sadni, golf sadni. If I wanted golf to go retrieve his toy, I would throw my toy, and I would tell golf a port, and golf would run and retrieve the toy and bring it back to me. Shtikai, good boy, good boy. Sustan, shtikai, good boy, good boy, good boy. 
But Golf isn't alone in his work. He is part of a long line of canines who have used their keen sense of smell and devoted loyalty to serve alongside the men and women of police departments across the country. Whether it's in search of criminals or illegal drugs, the success of the Canine Corps is a direct result of the training, love, and devotion shown the animals by the officers they serve. Together, they make a team, a team that plays together, and a team that works together to protect all of us from criminals, drug dealers, and smugglers of all types. Thank you, Golf. You're a great dog. Well, I think that pretty well covers it. I think that pretty well covers all the equipment used in police departments everywhere. Not quite. Really? Oh, you're right, Amber. I forgot about the Harbor Patrol. They patrol our nation's inland harbors and waterways, enforcing our laws and helping those in need. To help them perform their jobs well, their boats are equipped with radios and onboard computers, together with radar and sonar equipment to allow them to see what's around them and even what's underneath them in all types of weather. Do they train you to drive the boat? Well, actually, Amber, you don't drive a boat, you pilot it. The same way a pilot flies an airplane. And yes, these boat pilots are trained to work in all types of weather and sea conditions. That's a fast boat. Right again, Amber. But these boats have to be fast because just like a police car, when these harbor police have to respond to an emergency, they have to get there quickly. In the same way police departments patrol their city from the ground and from the air, the men and women of the Harbor Patrol work both on the water and beneath it with divers like these called frogmen. Well, do you think you have enough for your school report, Robbie, or is there anything else I can do for you? Oh, thank you. You've already done enough with everything I've learned today. Harry, I really enjoyed our adventure today. Aww. I hope to see, see you again, again soon. soon. Hey, Robbie, maybe you can use this for your school report. Thanks, Harry. You're the greatest. <laughs> Be good, you guys, and good luck on your report, Robbie. See you later. Bye. Bye. Thank you. See ya. <laughs> Bye. All around your neighborhood, there are people who are doing good. True blue. The policeman. True blue. Police woman. And if you need any help at all, Driving through the streets, walking on the beat, flying through the air, or anywhere with the men and women in blue. And you know we're here to help you. True blue, the policeman. True blue, police woman. Keeping danger out of your way each and every day. True blue, the policeman. True blue, police. Police woman, true blue, the police.